proper resting between sets and between, okay, proper resting between sets and between workouts and mm -hmm. over the long term. All right, so actually, it's, uh, it's good that you group those together because I think that rest intervals and training frequency actually operate very similarly. And so for rest intervals, the research is now quite clear. I would say that short rest intervals are detrimental because they impede your ability to do work. The ATP creatine phosphate system, it needs a few minutes to recover. So if you're only resting one minute, then the energy production is the main limiting factor. Metabolic stress and the ability to produce energy. Whereas if you rest a few minutes, then the higher threshold motor units have recovered a bit. There is a bit less metabolic stress and you can produce energy again. So you're ready again to stimulate the biggest motor units maximally. And you can do more work. Like just more work means more mechanical tension on the muscle fibers means more muscle growth. And that, that's now reasonably well established. We know that that increases muscle protein synthesis. We know it increases muscle growth in long-term studies. And there's been a big paradigm shift since I published my review paper on this. And then we followed it up with a study. Whereas before the idea was like short rest is better. So that's one thing where bro science has actually been proven completely wrong. It's like, it's the complete opposite of what the traditional idea was. And I think the same applies to increase training frequency. And a recent study actually demonstrated this quite well. They compared um, individuals with, it was a within subject design, but you can think of it as uh, one group did uh, nine sets on Monday, and one group did three sets on Monday, three sets on Wednesday, three sets on Friday. So they spread out the leg, it was leg pressing, they spread out the leg pressing across the week. Now, when you equated the volume, so you looked at how many reps you can do in the nine sets, and then you're going to distribute them over three days so that you do the exact same number of reps. Then the muscle growth was the same. But in the group where they just were allowed to train to failure or do as many reps as they could, then they got about 25% more volume. And as a result, they gained almost double the muscle actually in this study. Now, yeah, effect sizes from salt bodies you cannot translate like that, but it, it clearly is an indication it worked better. And that's because they did more volume. They stimulated the muscle more across the week as a whole, which is the same principle as with rest intervals. If you are, if you do all of your, basically when you're extending your rest interval to the level of days, instead of minutes, we start calling it training frequency consideration rather than a rest interval, but it's the same principle, right? We're just looking at, okay, you put tension on the muscle. When do you want to do it again? A few minutes later or the next day, which is just an extension of the rest interval. Okay. And I think it, it works exactly the same principle. If you can do more work by spreading out your work across over time more, whether that's within minutes or days, then you'll typically achieve more. Now you can, of course, there's a certain amount of work that you can just handle. So after a certain point, uh, you, you won't gain more because your volume is already maximal. But up until that point, I think increasing your rest interval or your uh, training frequency, all else equal, will result in more total time inch lifted and therefore more muscle growth and strength development. Okay. So you said a few minutes. I just want to be more precise. That mm -hmm. for me means three minutes or it's probably not like 30 minutes. Is it, is, is there a lower minimum, two minutes minimum, probably one minute too, too short? One is, one is definitely too short. Um, I would say we can start talking from two minutes on because then at least there's recovery, decent recovery of the ATP creating phosphate system. So we're not talking about your energy uh, being a limiting factor. Over two minutes, um, like given the same number of sets, it's still the, the longer you rest, the better. The only issue is if you are, if it's time efficient, right? If you are doing straight sets, so you just do your bench pressing, you're in a gym, you have to occupy the bench press, and you're not gonna wait 10 minutes to do one extra repetition compared to if you waited four minutes. So it, it, it's just, it's very time inefficient. But I, in principle, the idea is that the, f the fewer reps you lose across sets, given the same effort, the better because you do more work. Okay. So that that's testable. I think when I go, I have a watch, so I'll do two minutes one week mm -hmm. and the next week I'll do three minutes and see if I gain reps. Ideally I do. And then, you know, at some mm -hmm. point there will be a diminishing return for me specifically. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I guess what I could do as well, and this is what you have in your training programs, is you would combine two or three or four even exercises where you would rotate them. That would that that exactly. was for this reason, I think, right? Yes, that's why I'm a big fan of combo sets, I call them, where you're still resting somewhat in between sets, but you do a set of bench presses, then a set of chin-ups, maybe leg press, leg curl, and you can do one set, one set, one set, and you only need to rest like 30 seconds or one minute, just catch your breath in between, and then you move on to the next one. And the benefit is that by the time you get back to your chin-ups, after doing three or more other exercises, you've had a very long rest interval, so you can do maybe the same number of repetitions or maybe one less or something compared to the first set. So your work capacity is excellent and it's super time efficient. So you get the best of both worlds. You get super high work output for the number of sets that you're doing and you don't spend a lot of time resting. So it's very time efficient. But what about your, um, uh, I don't know the technical word, but your cardio, if I'm doing four exercises with 30 seconds, my cardio is, is now I'm getting tired physically, which I expect would affect the reps. It can affect the reps at a certain point. Usually you can push yourself a lot more when it comes to cardio until it actually becomes a limiting factor. For many people, motivation is a big factor because when they start getting out of breath, like when you're out of breath and you're doing biceps curls, that's not going to limit the biceps curls. Like it's, the oxygen um, usage that you need for biceps curls is very low. So you can actually be super out of breath and do biceps curls, no problem. Now squats on the other hand might be a different story, right? If you do bench, if you do bench press chin ups and then immediately afterwards you would do squats, then you're just going to be completely gassed and out of breath. And you, that would actually be a limiting factor. Most people can push themselves a lot more than they think. Like you're doing your entire set like panting and it's still okay. Like it takes a, a long time before the muscle actually becomes like oxygenation in the muscle becomes the problem. But long before that, you start feeling like you're out of breath and it, it doesn't feel great, but the performance is there. It just requires more effort. It. And it depends on how, you know, how good your cardio is, which gets better if you do it a lot. I guess. Okay. 